Sitting at a bar on the inside, waiting for my ride on the outside. She stole my heart in the trailer All right, everybody, Flint from Flint and Steel. How's it going? As you saw, I just wire wheeled the edge right off of my Freeman. Uh, I can, you know, hold it by the blade all day long. What that actually does is it pushes your edge to one side. So it's very much on this side. Um, scratched up the blade like crazy, but this is one of my go-to outdoors blades. It's a real workhorse. I've carried it many, many times. I made this little sheath for it. Goes right in the back pocket, as I might be able to show you. I might be too close up. No, nah, that's good. So that slips right in my back pocket like so. Uh, one of my all-time favorites for going out in the woods and just really using a knife hard. Um, this is what started my love for Freeman's designs. Uh, as you know, I have the Freeman 451 now. And this knife is what started that obsession. So, let me show you how dull I got this. I'm promising you, I'm going to tear the paper before I cut anything. There we go. So you can see, there's no edge on this whatsoever. So we're going to start sharpening. Now, the red is to be used very sparingly. This is your ultra coarse. Um, I would use this for axes. I don't know that I would normally use this for a knife. But since we know what side I just pushed that burr over onto, we're going to try to straighten it. So I'm going to pull it towards me to try to get that burr to go back to the front. So about the only time I'd use this on a knife, because you can see how ragged it leaves it, um, would be because I know exactly where I put my edge. Got lucky I didn't break it straight off. So, still quite a lot on that edge. Very rolled. So let's keep going. So still a little bit right here. The reason I'm going back on this one is because I know where the edge is. So I'm just trying to pull that straight. All right. So now just with that little amount of effort, let's try again. So you can see, already almost got it back to razor blade. But now we're going to put a real nice uh, survivable edge on here. So we're going to drop in the medium, which is what you're going to be doing most of your sharpening on. Um, anything work related like this, I recommend the yellow. Uh, obviously we had a lot of damage to fix, that's why we busted out the red. But with these, I really like the pull instead of the push because it feels like you're putting the edge where it needs to be. It's all about getting your angle right. That's a much more workable edge. It's very nice. I'm going to work on the tip just a hair before we turn the stone to the uh, blue. Much better. Okay. So now that's the kind of edge we're going to want to work with. So now the final stone is the blue, which is just going to hone it real well. 
I would recommend any of your high-end knives only use this stone because it's going to put a lot prettier edge on and it might take a little while longer but I think you're going to see the results that are worth it. This feels like such a soft stone, and I'm going to tell you it's putting almost a shaving edge on there. We're going to go a couple more passes and see where that leaves us. But this is very, very nice. Let's just take a look. So we've still got a little bit of burr in there, so let's take that out. I want to make sure I show you guys exactly how much effort it's going to take on a fully wrecked blade. So you can see it's really curving, so let's see what's going on here. Okay, it looks like we got a little bit that we just need to take off. Actually, what I'm going to do is go forward a couple times and see if we can knock that little, like, micro burr on there. Now that we've got our edge so glassy smooth, it's really easy to do. That should be good. Don't try this at home, kids. Okay. There we go. Just like that. Brand new knife. Well, it's not brand new. But you've got a real nice sharp knife. Um, easily capable of doing whatever you're going to do. Just for fun. Let's try it. Not quite shaving. Uh, I'm going to work on it a little bit more and I'll be right back with you. Alright guys, just a couple more passes. I think I've spent, I don't know, one and a half minutes or so. So you're getting a lot cleaner, sharper cuts. Still not quite shaving, but uh, I think it's pretty good. You know, this is, like I said, a real workman's knife sharpener. Uh, it's not going to be for your high-end, classy... Uh, $300, $400 flippers, I don't think. You're going to either want those professionally sharpened or get a real nice uh, professional sharpening kit. I use a Lansky for almost everything. The uh, Lansky, one that sets your angles for you. Uh, that works for me and all my knives. But find what works for you. But I hope that answers your question, Hayden. I don't know if I shouted him out. I want to say that I did, but just in case I didn't. Um, this question was asked to me by... Uh, Aiden Wyman, he asked if I could do a video using this after I unboxed it, and I think this is a pretty good one. It kind of shows you the basics. As you can see, I left a lot of metal dust, um, but it's pretty good. You know, I really like it. It's good to throw in a pack. I'm not going to leave it uh, bolted to my table. That was just for your guys' convenience. Um, it does have the rubber stops, but I would honestly throw this in my pack more for... Um, being out in the woods. So I would take those sharpening plates in hand instead of on a rig like this. But it's all up to you guys. This is a great starter sharpening kit. Sorry about that cut. It does not leave a pretty edge is what I was saying. Um, but overall, work knife, work sharpener. Uh, you got to know your application on all things. So there's that for you guys and you have a good one. Bye.